So in this video, I want to talk about React State and React Props and how the two work together when you've got more than one component. So I have here an example where I've got an app inside of it. I have a component called message list and it contains a series of message components. Each of them has a heading, paragraph, a button, and then its container. If the message state says that it's been read, then it's going to be light gray text and nothing over the side. If it hasn't been read yet, it gets the little black triangle in the corner and the text is a little bit darker so it stands out more. So in my React Dev Tools, I can see here's message list. That's the container for all these message items. It has its own local state. Inside the state, there's one array called messages, and each one of the messages has an ID, a status, which is either going to be read or not read, text, and a title. All that data is being passed down. So if I click on one of the messages, we can see inside of props, there it is, props has everything that was in state, but just for this one message. So the ID, the status, the text, the title. If I click on one of the ones down here, inside of props, the status is red. One of the ones above it, inside of props, the status is not red. So everything else being the same, it's really just this status that we're gonna focus on. What I wanna do is I wanna be able to call a function when the user clicks this button, I want to have a function inside of the message object which is going to change the status from not read to read. Down here, it is not read, so if I click on it, I want to change it from not read, or rather from read, back to not read. So we're just toggling this one property. So let's take a look at the React code and see what we can do. The app's built with my app component. I've got a main div which is wrapping around the whole thing, calling on message list. That's all there is at the top level. If I go into message list, this is where I've got my state set up. So inside of message list, this is the parent for all the messages. It's going to have a state property, messages. It's an array with all this data. Down inside my render method, I have my UL with a CSS class name. Then I'm going to call the map method to loop through all these messages and I will pass the ID is the key and then I'm creating a prop here called message and I'm going to pass the message object. So the first one is going to get this object. The second one will get this. The third one will get this. And the fourth one will get this last one at the end here. So the entire object that is one of the array elements is being passed as a prop down to message. Here we are inside the constructor for each one of the messages. The props is being passed in. I'm creating state inside of there. I'm basically just taking the object that was passed in and making that state. So the ID, title, text, and status, all of them are being pulled out of props and saved as individual variables inside of state. Now, it's important to note here that when the constructor runs, this bit of code right here for the constructor only runs on the initial creation. If you're re-rendering components, constructor doesn't get called again. It's just you're changing the values of what's in the virtual DOM, which is updating what's displayed on the screen. So we can't redo this. We can't get props again to reset the state because the constructor doesn't get called. Same thing with component will update and component did update. These methods do run when the component is re-rendered or about to be re-rendered and then has been re-rendered, but React doesn't want to call the set state method inside of here because that's going to end end up in sort of an infinite loop where it's changing the state and then updating it again and then changing it and re-rendering, changing, re-rendering, changing, re-rendering. We don't want to do that. We don't want that infinite loop. So this is where it's important to understand the difference between props and states and what they do. All right, my return, I'm creating a div. And inside the div, I'm giving it two class names. One of them is message box. The other one is going to be the status that comes out of props. 
Now that's an important distinction here. This is the one that comes out of props. Props is what is passed from the parent down to this. There's my heading and my paragraph. For all three of them, I can use props. I want to get the value that's being passed down, but I'm not going to make changes to it. I'm going to just let it be whatever it is. Whatever was passed to the component, that's what it's going to stay as. Now, my button, I'm going to display a label, and it's either going to be mark as red or mark as under red, depending on what the current status is. So I'm going to state, I'm getting the status, and I'm saying, if it's not red, then display one of these values. Okay, back up to message list. Now, what I need to be able to do is I need to be able to change the value here so that when message gets re-rendered, the proper value will be passed down through the props getting to the message. That means that when I click this button, I need to be able to call a method that's up on the message list component because that's where the state is that I'm going to update. The state right here inside of message only exists inside of message. I don't have a direct connection between this and the state that's inside of message list. So my button needs to be able to pass data up the chain back up to message list. The way we do that is we will create a function up here. So I'll create a function here called toggle read. I want to be able to call this from the message. So I have to pass it down. We will just do the same thing we do with all props. Just like this. This method right here, that's what this dot toggle read is. So this method is being passed as a prop called toggle read. Whatever this is going to do, I'm passing it down to the message component. Inside the message component down here, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to say inside here on click equals. Now I could just do this. I could say this dot props dot toggle read and that would work. That would call the method that's up one level inside of message list. My problem is that if I call this back up on the message list, it's fine. It's calling it here. It's changing the state here, which means it's going to pass new stuff in the props down to the message component. So back in here, I'm going to get new props, but my state Remember, this code doesn't run again, so this isn't going to get updated. I do need to update this state because this state is what's driving this line of code, which is what's changing right here. I'm using whatever that state is to change the label on this button. So I have to change the state here in message as well as up at the top level where I'm getting my props from. So I'm going to create a function here. I'm, I'm just going to use a different name just so it's easier to tell the difference between the two of them. I will come in here and say toggle equals my method here, like this. My event object will be passed in, so if I needed to use that, I could get to it. Back up in message list, I'm going to be calling this one right here. Now, when I call this one, I'm going to need to access this state. I need to be able to find which one of the things matches, which one of the messages match based on the ID. So I will be passing in a message, and then I will be looping through this right here. So let's write that code out. So messages equals this.state.messages. That's this property right here, this array. And I'm going to loop through that with map. And I'm going to return an updated version. So I'm going to take this message that's being passed in. I'm going to find out what the status was for the one message that was passed in here. 
So as I loop through map, if I find the matching one, I will update the status. So let's do that. So my message, here we are. I'm running through map. I'm looping through all of these. If m.id, so that's these ones that I'm looking at right here. If that is the same as message.id. So message is the one that I'm going to be passing up from message up to here. If those match, then I'm going to change my m.status to be whatever message.status is. Like that. Then we'll just return m. So I'm using this variable m. It will represent one of these four values. That value, I'm checking to see if it matches the one that's passed to the function. If it does match the one that's passed to the function, then I'm going to be updating the status, returning that. So message is now going to be basically a copy of this with the status updated. Now that I have this new message object, I'm going to put this back into state to replace the old one. So we'll call this.setState. And I'm just going to pass in message. And since the name is the same, oh, sorry, no, this is messages. So there we go, messages, and then message. There we go. If we call this messages, then we could leave this as messages and just write the word message or messages. All right, so that's that part done. Now we know that up in message list, we have this method, and we can pass in a single object that looks like this and update the status in here by passing in an object that has that new status. This method being passed down through the props. Now inside of message list, I have something in props called toggle read. I can call it from here. We could say this.props.toggle read. We can call it. And we just have to pass in an object here. We have to pass in an object that looks like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my current state object. I'm going to update that. Then I'm going to pass it through this method back up to message list to update its state. Doing that will pass the new props down. This won't run again, but these props here will get updated which really is what we want to do. All right, so let's create something that represents our message, just the single object. So this.state, there we are. So I'm taking this object right here. I'm making a shallow copy of it using destructuring, putting that into message. Then with that new object, I can change the status. And I want to toggle it. If it's read, I want to make it not read. If it's not read, I want to make it read. So I'm going to use a ternary operator. I'll say message.status. If that is equal to read, then change it to not read. Otherwise, change it to read. There we are. So that changes this new object, which is a copy. So this new object has now the new status, whatever it is. I click it, I call this method, I change the status inside this object. This I'm going to use to update this state. And we can also pass it here, like this. So right now, I can run this. I will update the state up at the top level. I'm just not updating this one right here. Because I'm not updating this one, it means I'm not updating this. All right. So inside of app, message list, message. So inside of message list, here we can see the first one is not read. So I click on that. Sure enough, state is not read. And in the props, not read. So both of these are not read. I'm going to click on this button. This one in props got changed, but the one in state 
did not because I passed it up and up inside of message list, if we looked here, we'll find that for ID 12, the status has been changed. There it is. ID 12 status has been changed to red, but it hasn't been changed back down inside of the actual message itself right here. In state, it still says not red, which means my button hasn't been updated. So that is the last step here. I do have to change this one because that's what's driving this to change. We do need to change something in state to drive re-rendering here. Okay, so we're going to change this state by calling the set state method. And we're passing in a shallow copy of this object, which is the same shape as this one. Okay, now that I've done that, if we open this up again, message list number 12 is not read. In here, number 12, not read in state. And inside of props, number 12, not read. Okay, so all three of them not read. If I click on the button, the label changed, this changed, this changed to red, this changed to red, and back up in message list, number 12 has been changed to red. So we're changing it in the props and state that exist inside of message, as well as in the state that exists up at the message list level. And we can see that they all work wonderfully independently from one another, just toggling the state at both the local and at the top level because we were able to pass the method down, which called the method up at the top. All right, so I hope that helps you understand how state and props are connected, how you can use both of them to change the appearance, get things to re-render, and importantly to note, things like the constructor component will mount, component did mount, those do not get called on the second running, the second rendering component will update and did update will get called on the next re-render but we can't change state inside of those and you can never change state inside of render doing it in any of those three places you're going to get into an infinite loop situation and you'll see react will tell you if you tried to do that if i go this set state and i'll just say id is equal to that save it come back in here Okay, I'm fine. I click this. Now, as soon as it tries to re-render, this is the error message you get. When a component repeatedly calls set state inside of either of those, React limits the number of nested updates to prevent infinite loops. So, you get errors. So, we can't do this. We don't want to do this. All right, hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.